Hello, everyone. My name is Ria, and I'm the founder and CEO of SmartCane. Now, I want to welcome you all to the next 100 years of your lives and a look into part of the 15 years of mine. And what I'm about to describe to you may seem like science fiction, but it's actually a really, really exciting reality. And the change all boils down to one main thing, and that thing is technology. And it's a really, really interesting landscape. So I want you to take a look at this. Moore's Law, it describes a linear path for technological growth. But this is actually no longer applying anymore. And instead, it's something more like this. In the 1990s, the internet was set to be the next big thing. But now we're at a really, really interesting point in history where there's not just one next big thing anymore. There's so many. Whether it's an artificial intelligence, brain-computer interface, or quantum computing that is making this growth path exponential. So let's take a look back and backtrack about 100,000 years ago if we want to put into perspective how the world's going to be like 100 years from now. So this is actually how the world was like, and it was a very primitive form of life. But after that, humans have gone on to make some incredible things, whether it was the telephone, telegraph, a car, or even the light bulb, to even getting a man on the moon. And this is absolutely crazy. But when we take a look at where we are on the world today, things have changed immensely. We have reached a whole new level of connectivity, imagination, innovation, and so much more, with an abundance of things being available right at our fingertips. But however, within decades or even less, emerging technologies will cause disruption on a scale where things like the smartphone and the internet will just become gentle ripples on the world and ocean of history. So though we are seeing immense change in society today, it's actually, there's so much more to come around us. And this change is not being applied e equally to all 7 billion people around the world. And in fact, we're leaving a lot of people behind. Last year in grade eight, I was actually at my friend's house one day, and I noticed that a big group of these people was the accessibility community. My friend's grandmother came over and she was visually impaired. And I noticed that she was bumping into a lot of things when trying to get around the house. And after I got, more, after I got home, I got to do more research. And I found out that people like her who had sight loss were reliant on a stick that was never updated since 1921. And this is me, really passionate about development and coding through some amazing programs like the Knowledge Society that you guys saw before, seeing immense change coming out around me but I was shocked to see that nobody innovated on something so traditional. And it inspired me to come up with a solution. And that's where the Smart Cane came in. Smart Cane is a reimagined assistive tech device for the visually impaired to enable mobility and autonomy through safe and convenient travel experiences. Designed with the user in mind, it's a white cane with different value-added features like adjustable object detection, GPS navigation through haptic feedback, and also computer vision that can actually use a camera to recognize objects and also your family and friends when you're traveling. And this is really amazing when you're trying to achieve accessibility for the visually impaired. And from starting out as just a science fair project in the eighth grade, it's gone on to be so much more. We've turned it into a company. I've expanded the team to about 10 people, ranging from MBAs, designers, to engineers, built a prototype, raised over $75,000 in funding and partnerships with some amazing organizations and companies like you see here. And in addition, set two pilot projects for early next year. And it's definitely very exciting. <laughs> Thank you so much. So we need more change like this happening around the world, but how do we achieve that? The only way that we're going to make substantial change to solve a lot of the world's biggest problems is to get more smart people working on it, driving the solutions. But how do we actually do that? A big barrier that's stopping smart people from working on a lot of important problems that the world is facing today is focusing on just return on investment. But something important to keep in mind is you can get a return on investment while also having a return on humanity. And that's by solving a lot of billion dollar problems. But the thing is, when we want to create solutions to a lot of the problems that the world is facing, we actually don't have a good idea about what they are. And we live in a bubble. We're living in an amazing place in Toronto and North America 
we're, we're very, very privileged to live the way we are. But that's not the case for people all around the world, and it's essential to understand and get exposed to things that are happening around us. So there's a, an abundance of problems being faced worldwide, whether it's cost of living in the housing crisis, a depletion of food and resources that won't be able to sustain human life as, it, as the population raises to over 9 billion and even problems in healthcare, and the lack of accessibility and updates in the education system. But those problems also pose opportunities for us. And it also makes a very, very exciting next 100 years as we currently use technology to come up with solutions to them. And I think one of the most exciting things is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is changing the world at a breakneck speed. And an interesting reality that should be coming up in the future is actually self-driving cars. So that actually can happen in less than a decade. But how can we go beyond that? How can we make automated planes that can travel at light speed? Imagine living in Barbados and commuting to work in Toronto right here. But even beyond that, how can we achieve an even greater intelligence, predict change, predict diseases that might occur for humans like us? but also even achieve artificial general intelligence, where machines can even emulate human capabilities, but also surpass them. And that's something really, really crazy to think about. But how about bringing our brains to the 21st century, something that hasn't been updated even longer than the white cane? And that's something exciting that I'm working on today, brain-computer interface, leveraging the electrical activity in our brains to actually control computers and machines. And this is really exciting. A project that I'm working on right now is actually controlling a car and moving it with your thoughts. And it's definitely so, so interesting, and I'm learning so much. But what if we can go beyond that? Instead of just a brain to a computer or brain to a machine, what about a brain to brain? Controlling and connecting our minds so we can communicate telepathically. Or even going beyond that, how about connecting our brains to the internet? Imagine what we can do with that. We can download knowledge. Learning will be disrupted but even getting to experience another person's life and learning skills like Kung Fu in seconds. And another really exciting thing is this is already happening today. It's not going to happen 50 to 100 years from now because people are working on it right now. But all of this pales compares to what will come later, the ability to control our own biology. Using technologies and methods like CRISPR-Cas9 to actually edit our genomes, augment human capabilities, and even create designer babies. But something that I'm most excited about is human longevity. What if we can live like we're 22 until we're 80 or 90? Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or even further, being able to lengthen our telomeres produce more shelter in and reduce senescent cells to lengthen our lifespans to maybe 125 or 200 years. And that's something really, really crazy to think about. But what's the so what? We're experiencing an immense amount of change happening in society, but it's all about using these technologies and leveraging them to solve some of the world's most important problems like I outlined before. So I think what I want to leave you guys with is there is so much opportunity out there because each problem presents an opportunity for all of you to innovate. Your age doesn't matter. Your gender doesn't matter. It's just your willingness to put in the work how passionate you are about something and how much you hustle. And I encourage all of you that if you see a problem around you, just go for it. And another thing is, we need a lot more smart people working on solving some of the world's most important problems. And an essential thing to keep in mind is that there's a lot of economic incentive, but also that impact incentive that's going to help you do that. There's not one or the other because you can achieve both. And that's an amazing opportunity. And thirdly, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to get a ship to the moon. If you don't have experience to actually act on a problem that you see, that is okay. You can lead a team, you can manage people, and you can be the vision for that change. And you can get people to work with you who do have the skill set. So don't let that shy you away or scare you away from doing something like that. And lastly, I think the most important thing is you have to take an unconventional path to achieve unconventional success. 
If you want to be the next Elon Musk or Steve Jobs, you have to think creatively and think innovatively. Avoid the status quo and you do you. And that is how you're going to achieve some amazing results and have an incredible impact on the world. So we need to flip our thinking. We all need to think more innovatively, creatively, and put in capital to solving some of the world's most important problems. And when we do that, that is when we're going to achieve immense disruption. So let's start building the world that we want to live in today. Thank you.